just going to wait one more minute um, if people are continuing to join. Um, if you could uh, help me out and let me know in the um, GoToWebinar questions uh, panel, uh, let me know if you can hear me. That would be awesome. Um, you can, you know, enter in the color shirt you're wearing today. Uh, and we will wait one more minute and then get started with. Hi everyone, we're just waiting maybe 30 more seconds. People are still joining. Um, if you could let me know that you can hear me by just typing in um, your name or whatever you want in the GoToWebinar questions module, um, that would be very helpful. Perfect, thank you so much everyone. We are gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I wanted to welcome everyone today to the Give Education training webinar. My name is Dawn, and I'm gonna be leading you through today's presentation. I have a few housekeeping items to note before jumping in. Um, first, I want everyone to know that the webinar will be recorded and posted in the toolkit on the Give Education site under the resources tab. And then um, you can use the GoToWebinar uh, question slash chat module to send across any questions that you have during the presentation. And we'll get to as many as we can after the webinar. So um, again, my name is Dawn. I'm with Mighty Cause, the um, platform for Give Education Day. Um, I also have Carrie on uh, from Alumni Nations. Uh, she and Josh, who's also here from Central High School Foundation, have um, both been working really hard um, to uh, really help make this Giving Day great for everyone. So I wanted to welcome both of them. And um, Carrie, if you have anything you'd like to say, um, then now is a great opportunity. Thank you, Don, so much. Again, this is Carrie Dayton with Alumni Nations, and I just wanted to say thank you all for attending this call. Today is really all about strategy and trying to help you understand or give you the tools, rather, that you need to set yourself up for success. And I specifically had asked uh, Josh with Central High Foundation to come on the call today, uh, the reason being they have had a tremendous amount of success with online giving days for their foundation, and he is the, uh, uh, Josh, I'm going to say that you're the um, expert oracle of how to uh, raise funds with online giving and really engaging your guests in their platform. And so I wanted to just welcome you to listen to Josh, learn what he's going to do. And if you do have any questions or have any technical challenges or any any questions or anything that I can do to help you uh, make this a successful event, please don't hesitate to email me at the give, G-I-V-E dash education at alumninations.com. Uh, we will answer your questions. And if I don't know the answer, I will find someone who will help you. And I am here as a resource for you, Don. Thank you so much. Yeah, and hello, everybody. Um, like Carrie said, my name is Josh Busey. And uh, I'm the creative director and database administrator for the Omaha Central High School Foundation. And I believe this is our seventh consecutive giving day participation of some kind. And so uh, a day like this is something that we've had a lot of success with in the past. And uh, we've kind of, you know, worked it. So we have a, a kind of a strategy every year for our campaign. So uh, as Carrie mentioned, as you're going along, if you have any questions about maybe a campaign that we run in the past or any tips or suggestions we would be happy or I would be happy to help you out. Uh, we do our best to kind of 
create a campaign for social media that ties in with um, quotes from some of our students or teachers and people that we impact at the school. And it's just an incentive for, for people that want to give and participate. Um, and Don has a lot of great stuff for us to discuss today, um, including like a matching gift possibility. And that's something that we've taken advantage of quite a bit. Um, my boss, my executive director, Michelle Roberts, tries to reach out to donors who she knows that will participate and uh, ahead of time and secure a matching gift. So it, it incentivizes people to want to participate in our day of giving. And uh, yeah, so I, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but there's a lot of great stuff that Don's gonna talk about today. Um, and there will be a chance for questions at the end, I know. Um, so I guess, Don, I can turn it back over to you. Actually, Josh, can I ask you a quick question? This is Carrie. Oh, sure. Um, Josh, with regard to your participation in giving days in the past, would you say on, I mean, would you say that you guys put a ton of time into it or is it an average amount of time with a great reward? What's your opinion on how, how it works for your organization? No, I definitely think it's, it's uh, something very manageable. Um, I'd say obviously the first year is probably the hardest just because you're trying to get used to everything. But um, in all honesty, I think it's one of those things where you put in some work ahead of time. And then when the day of giving arrives, you kind of just have to sit back and see what happens. Um, so ideally you're scheduling social media posts ahead of time uh, to kind of get the word out there. Maybe you send a postcard out a couple weeks out to let people know about the date and how to participate. Um, but for the most part, most of your, your work should be happening ahead of time so that by the time the, the actual day arrives, you're in pretty good shape. Um, but I would say for sure, obviously the first year is the hardest, but I mean, it's a very manageable process. Um, I, I wouldn't, I, it shouldn't be su super overwhelming or daunting. Uh, it's, it's a great way to pe for people to get involved and participate. So um, the platform is super easy to use and set up. So I don't think uh, it should be a time consuming process. Great, thank you so much, Josh. Don, thank you. Yep, yeah, thanks to you both. Um, like Josh mentioned, I am gonna be going through, um, you know, just a little more in-depth look at um, email marketing, social media marketing uh, later on in the presentation. Um, and again, if you have any questions at all, uh, please feel free to put them in that questions um, module and we'll get to them at the end. Um, we are just really excited to partner with both of you for you know this inaugural event and we're looking forward to providing the technical support um, as you know everyone gears up for the big day um, and then just a little bit of background on mighty cause uh, really quickly um, we are a fully functioning um, organization fundraising suite that um, many many organizations use uh, 365 days a year uh, to raise money for their causes We've been around since 2006, and we're actually one of the first platforms to host Giving Days. So we've been doing this kind of event for a long time, and we're just really excited to host, um, to help host Give Education this year. So here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we're gonna be going over some of the basics for the Give Education Giving, giving Day. Um, then we're gonna go through the prizes available um, during the give, Giving Day, and then move into strategies that you can use to uh, really make this campaign um, successful for you. Uh, and then again, we'll do a Q&A session at the end. Uh, so if you do have a question, um, you know, feel free to type it in that questions box and we will see it um, and be able to answer it at the end. So Give Education Basics. Um, Give Education is hosted by Alumni Nations and is going to take place on March 24th. Uh, it's a 24 hour giving day that runs from midnight to midnight central time. Um, early giving uh, started on March 1st, um, but the main giving push is definitely going to be on uh, March 24th. Um, so, you know, there's still obviously plenty of time to register, get set up, and um, start soliciting donations. Registration is required for this giving day, um, and really any 501c3 organization or school um, uh, in, you know, any schools with NCES codes are welcome to participate, and there's no cost to register. So first things first, if you haven't already done so, um, you're going to need to register your organization for Give Education. Um, to register, just go to give-education.com and click register. 
on the registration page, you can search for your organization and create an account if you've never used Mighty Cause before. And once you take that step, a short registration form will appear and you can fill that out and click submit um, and you know that'll complete your registration. Then within 24 hours, you'll receive an email with next steps to help your organization um, get onto the site, customize and really plan for success. Uh, and then after you complete registration, you'll also have the ability to add additional administrators to your account if, um, you know, multiple people are going to help manage the campaign. And of course, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to email uh, the Mighty Cost support at support at mightycost.com. So once you filled out and submitted your registration form um, you'll want to click on the user icon in the upper right on the give-education.com site to access uh, your organization account um, your organization account is going to be the hub of your activity for the give education giving day so i recommend taking some time to get to know your account dashboard um, that'll appear on the left hand side of your organization account so when you log in you'll automatically land in your overview section so this is where you'll find um, a really handy to-do list that outlines some great next steps that you can take to customize your um, profile on the site, um, as well as metrics that will come in handy once you start actually raising funds. And then under um, the fundraising section on your dashboard, you can customize your organization page by um, toggling on the edit mode. Um, you can include page metrics, like adding a goal for the giving day. Um, that will enable a progress bar on your page, um, which is really handy when you know you want to send people there and they can see very easily how close you are to your uh, to the goal that you've entered in. Uh, then within the fundraising section, you'll also find um, a checkout flow, which we're going to talk about later on, um, as well as a matching grants tool, um, which we're also going to touch on later. And then below that fundraising section on your dashboard is a reports section. Um, this is where you'll be able to preview and export different types of um, donation reports, um, uh, disbursement reports, et cetera. And then you can manage your organization settings like URL customization um, and admin control from your settings section within the dashboard. So jumping into the overall profile for um, your Give Education account, um, your profile is the face of your organization for the Giving Day. So you're going to want to make sure it looks good and represents um, your organization well. And just so you know, your profile link is the link that you'll want to share with your supporters to ask them to donate to your Give Education page. So to share your page, just copy and paste that URL into an email or a social post or wherever you're advertising the campaign. Um, and then as you're going through your to-do list, you'll want to customize your profile to match um, your organization's brand. Um, you can change your theme color to match your logo. You can upload media to your gallery to uh, add some visual interest on your page. Uh, and your story or description is really the centerpiece of your organization profile. So in your story, you can put your mission statement, you can add photos and a video. Um, you can, uh, you know, embed something like if you have an existing video that's on YouTube or Vimeo, you can embed that into your story. So then when people come to your profile as you're, um, you know, promoting Give Education Day, uh, they'll be able to watch that video right, right on your profile. So this story section is just really where you can go in depth about your work. Um, you can make a strong appeal to donors. Just you know, tell them why your organization needs their support and you can show the impact of your work here as well. So after you get registered, I really recommend spending some time customizing this profile because the, really the more work you put into it, um, your donors are going to notice that. And you know, the more information that they know about your organization um, and really what you're focusing on, that'll help um, you know, them to know, oh, I definitely wanna to donate to this organization. Um, you know, if they know what you need, then um, they'll, they'll be sure to complete that. So the next item that I really recommend um, customizing is your organization's checkout flow. So the checkout flow is located within your fundraiser section on the dashboard. Um, the checkout flow is what your donors experience when they make a donation towards your organization. Um, the first part to customize is your checkout steps. Uh, this is probably one of the more important features to focus on when you're setting up your organization's profile page. 
The, the checkout flow section just gives you a lot of control over the donation process for your organization. Um, it allows you to opt into collecting uh, certain information you want from donors like addresses and phone numbers. Um, you can also set up custom suggested donation amounts and add descriptions to help you know tie those amounts to items or services that your organization provides which you know just strengthens your appeal to donate so the checkout steps within your checkout flow also allow you to preview the whole checkout process without having to make a test donation so you can see what your final process looks like and then use that to edit yourself if needed so um, moving on from the dashboard uh, in your Mighty Cause Give Education account, I, I just want to make sure I mention the really great tools that you can use as you get ready for Give Education, uh, and that's going to be the Organization Toolkit. Uh, the toolkit is located on the homepage for Give Education Giving Day, which is give-education.com. Um, the toolkit has a, t a lot of tips and tricks. It's got FAQs, it's got walkthroughs, um, it has uh, templates you can use for your email and social media. Um, to help you get inspired and, you know, really figure out how to promote your campaign. Um, and then the toolkit is also where you'll be able to find today's training recording as well. Um, and we do have the previous training recording um, already uh, on demand within the toolkit. So if you miss that one, um, feel free to go back and watch it anytime. Um, definitely check out the toolkit if you haven't already and refer back to it as you're planning your campaign. Prizes. So this year, um, $6,000 in prizes will be given away to participating organizations. Um, these prizes are provided by the Comer Family Foundation. Um, basically every hour during Give Education Giving Day, there's gonna be $250 given away to a randomly selected organization um, that has raised funds during that hour. So the first winner will be pulled at 1 a.m. Central on March 24th, and we'll continue pulling those winners um, with a new winner uh, being drawn every hour until the giving day ends. Um, so for more details uh, on the prizes, uh, definitely check out the prizes tab on um, give-education.com. Okay, so jumping into campaign strategy. Um, so the prizes provided um, during Give Education Giving Day um, definitely allow for you know additional incentive um, for your organization to get donations every hour of the day. Um, so, you know, keep tabs on which organizations have won so far. If you've won yet, um, there will be a list of all the winners that will show on the site on March 24th. So you'll be able to um, check that out, keep track of it. And, you know, if you haven't won yet during the day, then that's definitely a great messaging piece to keep your donors and supporters, um, you know, updated on, you know, if you've won one of those um, random hourly prizes yet, or um, if you're close to, uh, you know, uh, close to your own goal that you've set for Give Education as well. Um, basically, you know, emphasize how much is at stake during the giving day. You know, how much money, um, how much, you know, could the money that you raise do for your organization? What would that money help you achieve? Tie everything um, back into your overall messaging about, you know, what you do, why you do it, to just really get people excited about helping you win that money. Um, and then if you do win one of the, um, prizes during the day, then that is an awesome messaging piece to just really pump your donors up and get them excited. Um, just, you know, everyone likes to win things. So whenever, like if you are one of the um, the winners during the day, then make sure that you communicate that to your donors and just get them pumped up about it as well. So mapping out your campaign with mini goals. Um, Give Education is, you know, a 24 hour event so the trick to making the most of it is to sustain your fundraising momentum. Um, one really great way to do that and, you know, to make sure that your campaign's on track too is to set mini goals for your organization to help generate buzz and build excitement. So set mini goals um, for certain hours of the day so you can keep people excited about your goals and, you know, continue working towards, um, you know, your overall fundraising goal that you've set for the day. Um, mini goals just really help sustain your fundraising momentum and they get people excited um, about helping you reach your goal. Um, so to set mini goals, you'll want to think about, you know, your overall fundraising goal for the day um, and what you'll need to raise or, you know, if, if your goal is like number of donors, how many donors that you'll need to get um, each hour or section of the day to reach your goal. So 
be sure to keep in mind too when your donors are most active um, to kind of adjust your hourly or um, you know section goals accordingly. And when I say section, I mean like our goal this morning um, until 10 is to get this many donors. And then our goal during the lunchtime um, portion of the day is to get this many. And then our goal in the evening is to get this many. Um, so just you know keep track of everything, adjust uh, your those goals depending on you know when your donors are most active. Um, and you know, if you know that there's going to be certain times of the day that's going to be slower for you, then you might want to boost that time period by utilizing a matching grant um, to to kind of shake up your campaign. And we'll talk more about matching grants in just a little bit. Um, something else that you can do to get your campaign rolling is to ask for seed donations. Um, so seed donations are donations from people in your organization's inner circle that essentially break the ice with donors. Um, no, no one really likes to be the first donor. There's, there are exceptions. Some people are like really love to be the first donor. But um, for a lot of organizations, um, what works best is if they have a little bit of momentum built up before they um, really make some big pushes. Um, so to help get that ball rolling, um, that you know, people ask for a seed donation um, from their board staff, um, especially those who are director or C-suite level leaders at your organization. Um, volunteers are great uh, people to ask for, you know, those initial first donations before you go out to your wide net. Um, really anyone at your organization who's highly engaged with your work. Um, seed donations do not have to be huge donations, um, but getting a little bit in the bank by, you know, tapping people in your inner circle really does help your uh, move your campaign forward and, and get those donations coming in. So securing a matching grant. Um, a great strategy for driving donations on a giving day is securing a matching grant. Um, so a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your organization leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering that large donation up as a match. So for instance, if you had someone willing to give you $1,000, um, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, um, you could use it as a matching grant. So basically you take that thousand dollars and say to your supporters you know hey between this hour and this hour um you know our donations are going to be matched up to a thousand dollars um which basically allows those donors those smaller donors to double their donation um so um you can do a lot within um our uh, matching grants tool within your account um like you can set a cap for donation matching um you know say two hundred dollars so one person doesn't come along and just make a big donation and eat up your entire match. Um, our matching grants tool, um, we talked about it in the last training um, uh, recording. So it, it's just really cool. It's a complex little tool that just allows you to do a ton with your matching grant. Um, and on our platform specifically, we have seen that matching grants, especially on a giving day, can be a really powerful way to drive donations. So, you know, since um, ma a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'll want to follow the same process as, um, as you would to create one um, when you secure matching gifts. So um, you prospect, you cultivate, and you ask. So people you, you know, should consider as prospects for a matching grant are board members. Um, sometimes, you know, an individual board member will be happy to provide a match. Um, but, you know, one thing you can also consider is asking your board to work together as a group to provide a match. So, you know, if your board still has to pay its dues, for instance, you could utilize their dues by turning that into a matching grant. Um, major gift donors who have given large donations to your organization in the past are also really good prospects. Um, and providing a matching grant uh, can be a really fun way to, to liven up their donations. So instead of just writing a check, they're helping your organization grow and drive other donations as well. So, um, you know, you can you can also give uh, a donor um, who, you know, provides a matching grant some extra recognition when you're promoting the, the match. Um, so, you know, major gift donors who like a little shout out are even better um, for those, you know, matching grant prospects because of that. Um, corporate sponsors are also really good prospects. Uh, it's really, you know, it's a fun, proactive way for corporate sponsors to get involved um, in a public way and draw attention to their philanthropy. So at this stage in the game, 
um, you know, you can start making phone calls, uh, sending out emails, and just, you know, start cultivating those prospects by letting them know what you're doing. You know, we're participating in Give Education Day. Um, we would really like to utilize a match to um, make our uh, giving day exciting. This is especially um, helpful if, you know, in the middle of the day when you know your donors are uh, not super active, then maybe having a match to, um, you know, kind of make that portion of the day more uh, profitable for you, um, then a match might be a great opportunity at that time too. Um, you know, in the coming weeks then, uh, as you're kind of um, searching out these prospects, um, you can make the ask and then shore up the details of the match as well. Um, you can also have more than one match running at the same time on Mighty Cause. So, you know, if you get a lot of great responses, that's awesome. Um, don't feel like you have to just pick and choose one. Um, so at the end of the day, a matching grant is is really a, a marketing tool. So in order to make the most of your matching grant, you're going to need to promote it. Uh, so the first step is going on um, to the matching grant tool on your Give Education profile and adding the matching grant there. Um, there are some you know marketing tools built right into the platform for your matching grant. So for example, if you set one up, um, as soon as it goes live, it's going to put a little sticker on your donate button that uh, notifies everyone coming to your profile that the matching grant is active. Um, there's going to be some changes to your checkout process to reflect the match, and the match also gets listed on your organization profile. Um, you'll also want to add some information to your story, though, especially if it's a big match, and you'll want to promote it on your social media channels. Um, you know, send out an email, um, basically pull out all the stops to let all of your followers know about the match. Uh, countdowns also add urgency. Um, so, you know, counting down and sharing your progress can be a great way to get people excited um, and, you know, urge them to stop what they're doing and make a donation. So, um, since Give Education Giving Day is a 24-hour um, event, you'll, you know, if you do have a matching grant, um, you, you're you welcome to set it up for the whole entire day. Uh, but, you know, if you know that your donors are most active between certain hours, like I said before, um, you could set up the match to just last for a few hours so that you can really try and drum up um, the urgency during those few hours. Um, but again, you know, it's totally up to you. The tool is very flexible. Um, if you're, you know, you're not quite sure how you want to do it or what would provide you the most success, then feel free to email um, you know, Carrie or um, Josh or our support team at Mighty Cause to get some strategy insight into, you know, your specific organization. So moving on from matching grants, um, I want to talk a little bit about ambassadors. So ambassadors are people who are usually in your organization's inner circle uh, who can help boost your um, campaign. So, you know, that includes board members, volunteers, um, volunteers, you know, especially ones who are highly engaged, staff members, etc. Um, utilizing ambassadors can help you break out of your list of existing supporters um, and engage new people, you know, new donors, people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. They can simply share a link to your page within their social circle um, to, you know, to ask their family and friends to donate. And that'll obviously help boost your campaign to give um, education. Um, so like if you have a board member, for instance, who's very well connected, this can be a really big boost. Um, or your ambassadors can help by getting involved in peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a fundraising technique where you basically deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, the Mighty Cause platform is set up for really easy peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And, you know, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising can be a great way to kind of shake up your campaign and acquire new donors. Um, so if you wanted to try peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, basically what you would do is you ask um, supporters to set up a fundraising page um, for your organization uh, to, you know, help you raise funds for Give Education. Um, this may sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters and allow them to tell their own story about your organization. You know, how they came to work with you, why your work is important to them. Um, and, you know, their story, their participation doesn't, you know, distract or draw attention away from your campaign. They're, they're operating alongside your campaign. You know, they're reaching out to people they know personally for donations, um, which in most cases, their friends and, you know, colleagues and family, they're not people 
that your organization would uh, typically have access to um, to solicit for donations. So in the peer-to-peer -peer process, you're actually picking up new donors uh, most of the time. You know, so for people like your board, volunteer staff, program alumni, this, this can be a really great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. Um, and it can make, it can make um, the whole experience just more meaningful for them um, than just making a donation or sharing a link. Um, so you could, you could take this peer-to-peer -peer fundraising um, and make it part of your stewarding process, you know, building, sustaining a relationship with that specific reporter. Um, we've seen organizations um, on the platform get some really great peer-to-peer -peer action going by just inviting people on social media or sending them an email asking for their help. Uh, and, you know, for younger people who have a big social network and are really comfortable online, you know, maybe they don't have a lot of cash to give, but asking them to be a, a fundraiser for you, this can be a really great way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution um, for your organization. So to help make things easier for um, for them, for your uh, you know ambassadors, you can set up a fundraising page template for them within your um, account. Uh, in that template, you can add uh, image, talking points, facts, and logos. Um, you can you know you can even offer to help them set up their page since um, you know hopefully you'll be pretty comfortable on the platform soon if you're not already. Um, organizations that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising do tend to raise more money on giving days, so it's definitely worth talking about, um, you know, how you can incorporate into your campaign strategy. So the, you know, the timeline is is great to get started on this. Um, we've got a couple weeks until Give Education Giving Day, so now is a great time to kind of um, put out the word to ask people to join, um, get them comfortable with it, and then there's not like a ton of time. Um, for them to, to back out beforehand. So now's a great time to put the word out there and then you know start uh, putting things together uh, to send to them, get them signed up, um, all that good stuff. So that they can start raising money um, as soon as they're on the site really, but um, big pushes on uh, March 24th. So if you do, if you're, if you're able to generate a lot of interest in peer-to-peer, um, or, you know, let's say you've done that, you've participated in a giving day in the past, um, and uh, you've done that before, or you want to try something new, um, I would, you know, consider trying out team or event fundraising as well. So teams and events can be a great uh, way for groups of people who want to fundraise together, like your board or companies or just volunteer groups um, to, you know, make that statement for your, for your organization. Um, teams and events can be a great way to get people working together and united for your cause. Um, they also are a great way to inspire some friendly competition to keep people motivated at the same time. So the difference between um, teams and events is basically that an event allows individuals and groups of people to participate and fundraise together, while a team fundraiser is just a group of individuals working together toward a collective goal. Um, so one of the cool things about using our teams um, or events products for Giving Day is that there's tools built in to make it managing um, uh, really easy. So for instance, you can create a template fundraiser um, for a team and event as well. And you know, as we discussed previously, it really helps um, you know help people get up, set up on the site quickly since it pre-fills some of those sections on their pages. Um, you can also email team and event members through the platform to keep them motivated. Um, so, you know, teams and events are essentially just more complex peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Uh, they can be a really great option if you've got a lot of people willing to fundraise for you or if you've done peer-to-peer -peer before and just kind of want to try your hand at um, a new type of campaign for a given day. So your email list is going to be one of the most important tools during Give Education uh, because emails are a direct line to your supporters. Um, so unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way um, or preventing people from seeing what you send them, because unless they've unsubscribed, your message will end up right up in their inbox and you know probably send them a notification on their phone as well. So I want to talk for a bit about email strategy because that's going to be important for Give Education. Um, you know, in general, you're going to want to keep your emails relatively short, uh, simple, and definitely skimmable. 
Um, most people read their email on their phone these days, so they're not going to be interested in reading a novel. You know, they're going to want to be able to skim it and get to the point. Um, people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So I highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot um, or give on a regular basis, one-time donors, and people who have utilized you know, your services um, but have never donated. Um, other segmentation groups can be your board, volunteers, um, and so on. So you don't need to craft entirely new emails to reach uh, each of these groups, um, but you can tweak small things about the emails for each group to make it more personal. So for instance, uh, in an email to volunteers, um, you want to acknowledge how they already help your organization. Um, and you know, another, you wouldn't want to send an email to like a major gift donor asking for a $25 donation. So you know, be strategic about it. Um, uh, really think about you know what kind of messaging you want to send to each group. Um, just identify those key segments and tailor your message to them. Um, again, when an email is tailored to who the recipient is and you know the relationship they have with your organization, they are much more likely to read it and take action on it. Um, and how you segment depends on the program you're using, but you know most services like Constant Contact and Mailchimp. They use tags to segment people on your email list. Um, so that one of the first things in you know creating your email strategy is definitely going through and identifying the different segments that you want to target and kind of working through to figure out what message you want to send to each. Um, the other thing that you'll want to pay attention to is the timing of your emails. So I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand. Um, and if you have a template email ready uh, for things that you need to send out day of, uh, you know, like a blast email asking people to help you get to your campaign goal or an announcement that you won one of the um, hourly prizes. Um, as I mentioned before, most people read their email on their phones these days. So make sure that you choose a mobile friendly email template and definitely test it out beforehand. You know, look at it on an iPhone, an Android, um, make sure that it looks the way that you want it to look. Um, and then leading up to the event, um, I also recommend uh, doing some A-B testing, especially with subject lines, because you'll want to make sure um, that not only people are receiving your emails, but people are driven to open your emails for Give Education as well. So, you know, try out different subject line formats, try things like, um, you know, if your audience is like that, add emojis, um, see, you know, what works better um, to get people to open, open your emails. So, you know, when you're sending out the critical emails, this way you'll have an idea of what tends to work with your email list. Um, you know, A-B testing, if you're, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting an email up 50-50 and testing a variable. So, um, let's say you're testing a button color or a subject line, you know, half your list gets email A with one subject line, the other half gets email B with another subject line, and then whichever email gets the most opens basically wins. Um, you know, for button color or placement, the email with the most clicks would win. So, you just want to be careful about testing too much, throwing too many variables in there, because then, you know, it's really hard to say why something won, and test, uh, won the test and performed better. Uh, lastly, your call to actions within your emails should be very clear and action oriented. Um, uh, call to actions like give now, donate now, help us today. Um, more passive calls to action like uh, thanks for donating or please contribute aren't as effective. Um, so you're going to want to be crystal clear and urgent with your call to actions within your emails. Um, you know, have multiple people look at the emails uh, that you write and, um, you know, create within your email program. That way, you know, you get other people's opinions. Um, if you've already done a lot of extensive email testing and work uh, within your organization, that's awesome. Um, you're ahead of the game and you already have an idea of what works with um, your supporters. So uh, for a high stakes day, um, like Give Education, we really recommend um, staying in your comfort zone when it comes to social media. Um, go where your audience is. 
Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you've never logged into TikTok before, um, or, you know, if you've never logged in in your whole life, that's fine. Um, you do not need to use TikTok for Give Education if that's the case. Um, if, however, you have a thousand followers on your Facebook page, but only a handful on Instagram, then you should probably spend more time and effort on promoting your campaign on Facebook than Instagram. Um, you know, put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely to reach people and have an impact. So I definitely, um, you know, Josh kind of touched on this at the beginning, um, schedule any posts um, in addition to emails that you can ahead of time, just to save yourself, you know, a lot of trouble um, during the giving day and leading up to it. Um, get your key content scheduled. Um, you can do that with Facebook's publishing tools um, or Creator Studio. Um, you can go into TweetDeck and schedule your um, tweets. Uh, you know, basically save any like live posting on the day of for stuff that needs to be done that day. Um, you know, like if you want to um, tweet or post every time somebody donates and, and thank them, um, that, that would be an example of something you'd save for day of. Um, if you want to save uh, uh, posts for updates on your progress, prize announcements, um, you know, get templates set up early. Uh, that way, if you do win a prize, whenever someone does donate, you can just copy and paste and enter in the applicable um, information and really save yourself a lot of trouble uh, on the day of. Um, and, you know, doing this allows you to quickly respond to comments, um, you know, on those posts. It allows you to interact with your followers more um, since, you know, interacting with followers is really important on social media. And the interaction can also help you in terms of the algorithm since um, most platforms show priority to post with lots of engagement. So scheduling everything ahead of time, writing out templates for yourself, um, make sure you sit down and take some time to do that. That way on the day of, all, all that you're really actively doing that day besides monitoring um, your, your uh, page is uh, you know, putting out announcements for real time stuff and then interacting with the posts that you have previously scheduled that people are just now commenting on. Um, I, I do recommend um, budgeting a little money if you're able to boost some posts or promote some tweets. Um, and on, you know, on social media, $20 for an ad can, can go a pretty long way. Um, so you'll wanna make sure that your ad is targeted properly. Um, and if you're not sure how to target an ad, you can always just default to targeting people who just like your page already um, or follow you. Uh, so in terms of what types of content will do well on social media, um, it depends a little bit on the platform, but in general, photos and videos do really well. Um, and you may wanna consider doing something out of the box like a Facebook Live video or um, a watch party for a campaign video um, to help generate some of that um, additional engagement because um, that kind of stuff, anything visual is really algorithm friendly um, and will kind of push you up and bump you up um, on people's news feeds. Uh, and then, you know, of course, too, if you're asking them to share, then that just gets you additional exposure to people outside of your, um, you know, supporter group uh, and is always a great um, uh, ask in those posts. Um, so finally, when uh, you're planning your campaign, follow-up is also very important to consider. Um, so, you know, when you're planning your content, you'll also want to plan your thank you to donors. Uh, things like making a video or a photo of your staff can be really, really great for this. Uh, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds that you've raised and, you know, kind of close the loop on your campaign. So, you know, if you, if you were fundraising for something specific, uh, during um, give education or, um, you know, if you uh, had a specific goal that you were really marketing that day, um, then that those would be great opportunities for you to kind of close the loop. Um, you know, obviously you'll want to send out emails periodically on your progress during the day, um, but closing the loop after the fact um, is also a great, uh, a great practice too. Um, and then You'll also want to make sure that you've got a good onboarding plan in place for any new donors um, that you know you've acquired during Give Education um, to to basically encourage them to come back and donate again. Um, you know, if you collected addresses, then mailing um, donors or um, you know any existing donors, uh, you know information or a welcome packet that can be a great way to kind of steward them. Um, and then you can also create an automated email journey um, where 
you know, donors can get more information about what you do and why it's important to support your work. So really take into consideration um, after Give Education Day. Um, how are you going to steward the donors that have given, new donors that you've acquired? Um, what are you going to do to, to keep them engaged with your organization? Um, so make sure that you include that in your planning strategy as well as you're getting set up for the day. So lastly, as we wrap this up, um, I wanna make sure that all of our support contact information is here for you to reference. Um, this support information is specifically for Mighty Cause. Um, as the um, technical uh, partner for Give Education Day, if you have any technical questions, um, or you know, if you wanna strategize around some of our tools that we provide within your accounts, um, you can reach our support team uh, at support at mightycause.com. Um, they are available Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern. You can also um, call them um, at the number there as well. And then on uh, Give Education Day, um, specifically, they'll be available 24 hours. So if you have any problems at all during the course of um, the day on Give Education Giving Day, um, our support team will be here to help you as well. Okay, so um, let me see if, there were any questions that came in. Hey, Don, I can uh, speak for just briefly about a couple thoughts that I had as we were going along. Um, so for the mini goals, um, some organizations, we haven't done this in the past, but I know some organizations have done such a thing where they set certain thresholds and if they have a donor that will give an additional amount of a certain threshold is is reached so for example say you raise ten thousand dollars and the donor says i will give an additional five thousand dollars on top of my matching gift if you reach that threshold it's kind of another incentive for people you know if you're if you're really close to that ten thousand dollars for people to say oh yeah like i need to donate um, because we're so close mm -hmm. um and for us the busiest times of the day i would say are in the morning, um, you know, that 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. time. And actually at night, we have a decent number of people who donate after work. Um, mm -hmm. So we kind of have like a late push in the day um, for some donations. Um, for seed donations, I would definitely suggest, even if it's just the people in your office making a donation, you know, a $5 donation, it adds some legitimacy and cre creates some momentum for your profile if you're able to show, oh, look, five people have already donated and like, you know, $50 has already been raised. It kind of creates that that sense of participation, I would say, um, or, you know, it, it, like I said, adds legitimacy almost to, to the cause. Um, our email strategy, we usually try to send an email out uh, maybe a week or the week of the giving day. We send an email on the morning of the giving day. And then depending on how close we are to reaching our matching gift goal, we might send a second email throughout the day. Um, we use MailChimp. That's the platform that we've used and had a lot of success with. Um, and then after the event, we try to send a postcard to thank our donors. Um, I'm the graphic designer, and so I have the postcard already created before the event is even uh, beginning. But all I need to know before we go to print, of course, is how much money we raise and how many donors we have. So that's something else where, uh, kind of what I mentioned earlier, a lot of this stuff you can kind of already have completed ahead of time. Um, you just kind of need to have some of the pieces in place. So when the giving day comes around, uh, every everything's already kind of scheduled out and uh, you're kind of, you've already spread the word, you've already educated people. Uh, it just has to see how things go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and one of the other things in terms of follow-up, um, having everything scheduled ahead of time is just really convenient when it comes to timing. Um, you know, Really the recommendation is to make sure that donors are thanked in some capacity within um, you know, at least 24 hours um, after they've given. Uh, the nice thing with you know, your account that you have with um, On Mighty Cause for Give Education is you can uh, you know, customize that initial thank you um, uh, receipt that gets sent out automatically after a donation. So you know your donors will be getting thanked 
um, and get their donation receipt uh, right away. Um, but so, you know, that's been done, but then knowing that, oh, we also have a postcard to send out um, and they're all ready to go uh, by end of week um, that day or that um, the week of Give Education or, you know, the first thing the following week. So just having it scheduled in a timely manner um, to know that this is already done. I don't have to worry about it and people will feel, you know, they'll get nice warm fuzzy feelings from donating to us. Uh, because we're thanking them and letting them know that they're, you know, helping make a difference in, in what we do. Um, we do have a couple of questions um, that came in. Um, one person asked, uh, do you require that the match go through the portal? Um, I have a donor who doesn't want the fees to be taken out of their match. Great question. We do not require um, matching sponsors to donate through the website. Um, so if you have, uh, you know, if you've been, you know, fortunate to secure a matching grant um, and, you know, that specific sponsor does not want to pay online, totally fine. Um, our tool has a way for you to still count those, um, you know, their donation um, into your total. And so as people donate, um, you know, like let's say you, you set up a one-to-one -one match, um, then you could set the um, tool up so that whenever somebody donates $10, then their donation actually goes up by 20 on your total count. So um, you don't have, your sponsor does not have to pay through the site. Um, and so, you know, sometimes that helps in terms of securing a matching grant. Um, and then, you know, you're still able to, uh, you know, utilize that grant on the site um, and, you know, get the benefits from it. Good question. Uh, and then the next question, um, how far out should you send your first email um, or social media post? Um, another great question. Um, Josh, you had mentioned that you guys uh, typically will send an email out the week of. Um, you know, that's obviously great practice. Since early giving uh, for Give Education is already open, you could really send an email or social post whenever you're ready um, prior to Give Education uh, because, you know, the, the site's accepting the donation. So if donors go to your profile to check it out from the email or social post that you put out there, they, they will be able to complete an action. Um, it's not like they're going to be going there and not be able to do anything and then maybe forget to come back later. Um, so if you wanted to send it out, um, you know, as soon as possible, you could definitely do that. Um, but, you know, uh, at least sending them something um, the week of to let them know this is happening, um, mark your calendars. Um, you know, if, if you want to donate ahead of time, if you know you're going to be out of town that day um, and not able to donate, please consider donating ahead of time. Um, to help us out during this giving day, then, you know, that's a great option too. Yeah, I was just going to hop in and say, um, we, uh, about a month out, we say in our, our newsletter, you know, kind of save the date. We don't really offer a lot of details, but we kind of just try to, you know, get it on people, people's radars and calendars. Um, we really start hitting the social media posts hard about two weeks out, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. So we try to try to you know every day have some kind of post about impact. Um, maybe it's a pic for us. We use a lot of pictures and quotes from students. So uh, we try to highlight the best that we can where some of our our teacher classroom grants are going to students and teachers and uh, field trips stuff like that. So there's a lot of very heavy visuals on our social media in the lead up to the actual day, um, and then on the day of it's. It's still some of that, but for the most part, we're just trying to inform people of how close we are to hitting some of our goals or you know certain thresholds for for goal amounts. Um, so again, a lot of the things we're doing, we're kind of just trying to build momentum, uh, get the data out there, especially since people can donate now. Um, we you know we include the link to donate in all of our posts. Mm -hmm. um, and encourage people to even kind of double dip. So maybe donate early and then also try to donate again on the actual day of giving since people can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another option as well. Yes, and uh, I mean, that's a great point too. Um, a lot of people are willing to give more than once. So if they give during that early giving period, um, you know, don't hesitate to send them information again the day of 
to ask them to donate an additional time, especially if, you know, during the giving day, you, you have something more exciting going on, like a match, then don't exclude them from your communications just because they've already given. A lot of donors are willing to give more than one time um, when, you know, it comes to causes they care about. Um, the other thing that I want to mention really quickly um, is uh, you do it, like, let's say for your Give Education um, Giving Day campaign, you do receive, um, you know, cash or check donations. You do have the ability to input those, um, you know, record those on uh, your account, and that way they show up in your Giving Day total. Um, there's no fees charged on um, the cash or check donations that you record. It's, it's literally just a record. Um, so if you do receive any sort of, um, you know, cash or check donations, or let's say you have an older, um, you know, donor base who prefers to give by check, totally fine. Um, you know, just collect what you can, and then you can input it in uh, on your on your profile. That way, uh, those donations, you know, you can you can see your total raised for the day. Um, and any records that you do input on your profile um, will be included in your donation report. Um, again, there's no fees charged on um, the offline or cash or check donations, um, but that is an option as well. Um, I think that was all the questions that we had. Um, if anyone thinks of something later um, or, uh, you know, you need some help with anything else, um, our support team is ready, uh, support at mightycause.com. Um, Carrie or Josh, do you guys have anything um, additional that you want to end with um, before we, you know, let people go? I just had a question. I think some people might be interested. How do people get the payouts from the day of giving? Such a great question. Um, so basically, there's two options um, on uh, Mighty Cause. We can do direct deposit. So you, if you sign up for direct deposit, then you can get your funds um, twice a month. So Give Education Day is March 24th, which means um, organizations who utilize direct deposits would get their funds on um, the following month on the 10th. Um, so April, around April 10th. Um, we also allow uh, check donations too, uh, or check disbursements rather. Um, so if if you don't want to sign up for a direct deposit, or let's say there's too much red tape with your district or whatever, um, check donation is possible, and we will send the check to the address that you have on file with the IRS. Um, you can find that address within your profile as well um, under the settings. Um, and then if it needs to be changed at all, uh, you can just contact us and um, we do ask uh, for additional um, paperwork to confirm that that's the address that you want it sent to. Um, but yeah, so check or direct deposit um, and uh, it's all automatic. So um, you, you know, you'll you get your funds uh, um, through whatever method you uh, decide. Okay. Um, so, Two minutes left, but um, I just want to thank everyone again for your interest in Give Education uh, Day. We're really, really excited to be the platform um, for this inaugural Education Giving Day. Um, again, if you have any questions or think of anything, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and you know, our team is here to help you, to help you strategize, help you get set up, whatever you need. Let us know, and we'll be happy to help. Um, and uh, lastly. Again, this webinar was recorded, so uh, I will be posting the recording in the toolkit on the Give Education site, which is give-education.com. Um, I'll be posting that uh, by tomorrow morning at the latest. So um, if you want to review anything, um, you know, have any of your team members watch it, then it'll be up there in the toolkit for you uh, to check out at any time. Um, so thank you again for uh, your um, attention and your time, and um, we are just so excited, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. <laughs>